Today, it's looking like Intel's ARC GPUs are dead. NVIDIA is already giving up, your GPU is outdated, and NVIDIA just announced something huge for gamers. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, there's a huge story coming from Intel that I think spells doom for the company's ARC GPUs. For those who don't know, a rumor from Moore's Law is Dead swirled a little while back that claimed Intel was planning to slowly end their discrete GPU business, with Battle Mage being the last real release from the company. Shortly after that, the head of Intel's graphics division, Raja Kaduri, tweeted a rebuttal to that rumor. But as I said at the time, even if it were true, Intel wouldn't admit it because they still put tons of money Money in the ARC and wouldn't want to hurt sales of their current GPU lineup. Shortly after that, Intel merged their graphics division into two existing businesses. They claimed that it was to better serve those markets, but let's just say it didn't look good. Today's story brings us back to Raja Kaduri. Remember the guy who tweeted about the rumor? Well, he's officially leaving the company. That's right, in his tweet about the move, he's apparently beginning work on a new software startup and will have more to share in the coming weeks. But yeah, this certainly doesn't look good for Intel's graphics division, especially with the company's terrible Q4 earnings report. Simply put, Intel can't burn cash like there's no tomorrow. Like many other tech companies, Intel has to look at cutting fat, and their discrete GPUs are likely just the area to cut. And Intel already admits that they won't be replacing him, so this is not looking good. But first, today's sponsor is Micro Center, and the company's gone completely mad with their Monitor Madness event, where they're offering amazing deals on monitors all month, like this 4K curved display for $50 off and tons more. Now, every time I talk about Micro Center, the one thing I hear is that there isn't a store near you. Well, fret not, because the company recently announced a new store location in Indianapolis, with two additional stores coming by 2025, so there's a chance one could be coming near you very very soon. If you've never been to a micro center, think of it like an incredible place that has all the parts you need for a PC build. But it's an actual store you can visit, so you can see what you're getting before you buy. I drove hours to visit a micro center years ago for my first ever build, and it was definitely worth it. They have some of the best prices in the industry and knowledgeable staff that's always there to help. Just visit my link in the description to find out more about their great deals. Next up for today, it looks like NVIDIA is admitting that they have an issue, or at least that they're giving up on forcing the new PCI Express 5.0 16-pin connector on gamers. For starters, Igor's lab claimed that there would be two variants of NVIDIA's 4070, the overclock cards with a TBP of 225 watts and the lower-end versions with a 200-watt TBP. Well, apparently the higher-end cards will come with the 16-pin adapter or potentially two 8-pin adapters, while the lower-end variants will get a single 8-pin connector, meaning NVIDIA isn't planning to use the 16-pin adapter across the board. Now, this may have been their plan all along, or it could be from fear that gamers don't trust the 16-pin adapter. Of course, we found out that the issues with the adapter mostly boil down to users not seating them correctly, but it still gets a pretty bad rap. Video Cards points out that the 8-pin connector is quote, old but proven, and given NVIDIA will apparently even let card makers use two 8-pin connectors, I'd say that looks to be the case. I mean, a single 16-pin connector is smaller than two 8-pin. And with all of that said, it looks like the rumor is true, because shortly after the article went live, a picture of an NO3D's 4070 packaging leaked. And as you can see, it will come with a single 8-pin connector. So yeah, it looks like NVIDIA won't be forcing all of their cards to come with 16-pin connectors. And apparently this will be the case for the 4060 Ti and 4060 as well. Next up, a certain class of gaming GPUs look to essentially be outdated now. More specifically, cards with less than 4 gigabytes of memory. For those who don't know, Microsoft and 343 Studios confirmed a while back that Halo Infinite would require at least 4 gigabytes of VRAM, but you could still play the game with a 3 gigabyte card. That is, until just recently. A new update for the game that was released earlier this month completely bars gamers with GPUs under 4 gigabytes from playing the game. Now, you're probably thinking, thinking, oh well, that's their fault. But in official system requirements at, say, Steam, all it says is a minimum GPU spec of an RX 570 or 1050 Ti. While the 1050 Ti has 4 gigabytes of VRAM, the more powerful 1060 has a variant with just 3 gigabytes. 
so according to the official requirements, you're good with a 3 gigabyte 1060. And obviously that's an issue. As of the writing of this video, there hasn't been a response from Microsoft or 343 Studios. But I think this tells us one other thing. GPUs with under 4 gigabytes of VRAM are becoming obsolete. Even back in 2021, TechSpot tested games with the 3 gigabyte and 6 gigabyte 1060. And when running at higher settings, the 3 gigabyte model did significantly worse. Doom Eternal wouldn't even let the 3 gigabyte model play at higher presets. What's worse, Nvidia's 1060 is the second most popular GPU according to the Steam survey. So a lot of people likely have the 3 gigabyte model. And that means a lot of gamers may soon be forced to upgrade. And lastly for today, Nvidia just released a huge update for the future of gaming. I'm talking something that will have a profound effect on graphics moving forward. During this year's GDC conference, Nvidia released their new Path Tracing SDK for game developers. Now for those who don't know, Path Tracing is essentially ray tracing on steroids. In more traditional ray tracing, a ray is sent out per pixel, while in Path Tracing, hundreds to even thousands are sent out and an algorithm is used to average out the colors to get a final pixel. Needless to to say this can be extremely taxing on the GPU, but it can make a pretty incredible image as you can see in this example from Nvidia. Unfortunately, barely any games use it, so Nvidia has officially released a path tracing SDK for developers, which means more and more games will likely use this extremely realistic method of ray tracing. Apparently Cyberpunk is set to use path tracing in their upcoming RT Overdrive, so they're likely using the new SDK. Basically, games are set to get more realistic looking than ever. Unfortunately, that of course means that we'll need even more powerful GPUs. Hopefully they won't be as expensive as a house. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for path tracing in the future? Or are you just bummed that your 3GB 1060 may be becoming outdated? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to save on your monitor in the description below. And as always, have a great day.